light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host shall encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war shall rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire into his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing. I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou saidest, seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. I got thy face far from thee, put not thy servant away in anger, that thou be my help. Leave me, not, leave me not, neither forsake me, O God, of my salvation. When my father and mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in the plain path because of my enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of my enemies. For false witness are risen up against me, and such as breathe up cruelly teeth. I have fainted unless I have believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For I'm thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thou the Father who art in heaven, I will be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth and within the heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For then is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord, in this
king and all other persons living in, listening in on this service. Father God, as we come here again another Sunday to give you praise and worship because God you're our father you're the one in whom we trust you're the one God that because of you we are here today Father God as I call you in our presence Father God today in our midst Father God, I want you to bring some sort of victory, some sort of conquering, some sort of healing, Father God, within our midst today. And as we go forward, Father God, within this week, Father God, I want you, Father God, to take our hands, Father God, and guide us to the Because because of you, Father God, our steps. Father God, guide our steps, Father God, and as we continue to praise and give you thanks, Father God, in your mighty name, amen, amen. I want to begin 361. The Lord is my shepherd. We are his sheep. He looks over us daily, Father God. And within him we should put our trust. The Lord is my shepherd. Oh, my Thank you. 
thy way not mine, O Lord. However dark it be, lead me by thine own hand, choose now the path, choose out the path for me. Thank you. 
when he prays for his friends. Also the Lord gave John twice as much as he had before. Then came there unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all that there had been of his acquaintance before and he and did he eat the bread with him in his house. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And he walked with me.
lifestyle because of evil doing. Neither be thou envious against the workers of the people too. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, so that thou dwell in the land, and fairly thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who persists in his way, because of the man who brings wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger, and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any ways to do evil. For evil doing shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord shall be For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the bondage of peace. The wicked plotteth against the just, and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he sees that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword, and have bent their bow, to cast down the poor and needy, and to slay such as be of upright conversation. Their soul shall enter into their own heart, and their bow shall be broken. A little that a righteous man have is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume into smoke, shall they consume away. The wicked burst and praise not again, but the righteous shows mercy and giveth. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighted in his earth. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have been young and now I am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful and lending, and his seed is blessed. Depart from evil and do good, and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment, and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land, and dwell therein. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. The law of his God is in his heart, and none of his steps shall slay him. The wicked watcheth the righteous, and seeketh to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord, and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. I have seen the wicked in great power. Yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. Yet I sought him, but he could not be found. Mark the perfect man, the of the right, for the end of that man is peace. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trial. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. 235 of God, peace, like the river. Peace like a river, I'm a peace like a river. 
But I rejoice in the Lord greatly. I know at the last your care of me has flourished again, wherein you were also careful, but you lack opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of one, for I have learned in what state I am in, therefore, to be content. Hallelujah. And I know both how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do and I will do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can and I will do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Notwithstanding, ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. Now ye Philippians, know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica, ye sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. But I have all and abound, I am full, having received of Ephesus. Epaphroditus, the things which were sent from you, Epaphroditus, the things which were sent from you, an order of a sweet smell and a sacrifice acceptable, were pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all the needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. But my God shall supply all our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. But my God shall supply all of me according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now unto God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Salute every saint in Christ Jesus. The brethren which are with the great with you be greeted. All the saints salute you, chiefly, they that are of seizures for soul. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. That the word of the Lord. As it was in the beginning, it's not whatever shall be. Thank you. 
Oh 
Give men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. You can be seated. This afternoon, I want us to reflect on this passage of scripture that we must forgive men their trespasses if we expect our Heavenly Father to forgive us of our trespasses. The topic that I will be looking at this afternoon is the spirit of forgiveness. The spirit of forgiveness. This afternoon, the spirit of forgiveness is likened unto that Trojan horse that has toppled many a nation, many a business, 
many families and friends relationships the spirit of forgiveness the lack of it has resulted in a canker like an aggressive cancer which metastasizes until it fully engulfs its pitiful compliant victim. Unforgiveness. That Trojan horse that has toppled many a nation, business, family, and relationships between friends and leaving behind a chasm of pain, anger, bitterness, resentfulness, leaving its victims mere skeletons as a result of this satanic motivated and directed weapons of mass destruction and destruction. The spirit of unforgiveness. Forgiveness is not just a one time act. But forgiveness must be a way of life. And this helps to bring us into every blessing that Christ has for us. In Matthew chapter 5 and verse 44 and 45 it says, I say unto you, Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Go good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That ye may be the children of God. That you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. In order that you can truly say that you are a child of God, you must have the spirit of forgiveness. The spirit of forgiveness must be an elemental part of your spiritual disposition. Forgiveness isn't a matter of picking or choosing whom you want to forget. Because you have to forgive who? Your enemies. You have to forgive who? Those who use you and say all manner of evil against you. It is not a matter of picking and choosing this afternoon. We cannot say, you have hurt me too much, so I'm not forgiving you. You cannot say, you have done this or done that to me, so I cannot forgive you. Because Christ tells us, oh glory to God, for if you love them which love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the publicans and the sinners the same. If you love those that you love and that love you, you are just no better than the publicans and the sinners. Jesus tells us, 
if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. Are you hearing me today? True repentance means confessing and forsaking every grudge. Forsaking every uh, bad thought that you had against the person. And crucifying every trace of bitterness towards them. And when you see them, there's still a, a, a trace of bitterness in your heart. Then you are still governed by the spirit of unforgiveness. I can get the EMS for that. If when you see the person, you still have that trend of, oh glory to God, of that trace of bitterness in your heart, then the spirit of unforgiveness still has you in its clashes. Forgive and ye shall be forgiven. Luke chapter 6 and verse 35 to 38. Forgive and you shall be forgiven. Glory to God. Give and it shall be given to you. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you. Today, you must give that unforgiving spirit to the Lord. You must give that unforgiving spirit today to the Lord. Glory to God. In Colossians chapter 3 and verse 13, it tells us, Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against an enemy, even as Christ forgave you, also, so also do ye. If any man has a quarrel against the other, even as Christ has forgiven you, also forgive ye. The scripture, the scripture says, forbearing one another. Forbearing and forgiving are two different issues. Forbearing means that you cease from all acts and thoughts of revenge. All your thoughts of revenge, you forbearing one another. That is what it means. So if you have a grudge, if you have within your spirit, glory to God, any matter that is causing you to think about revenge. How can I get back? How can I hurt that person? How can I hinder that person? How can I make that person's life uncomfortable? Forbear one another. Paul says to us. It says in, an, in other words. Do not take matters into your own hands. But instead enjoy the hurt. Glory to God. And let the matter, leave the matter, lay it down, leave it alone. Forbear one another. Forbear one another. Say not, I will do so to him, or I will do so to her. Glory to God. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 29. Say not, I will do so to him as he has done to me. I will render to the man according to his works. That is the spirit of unforgiveness. Mm. When we look at the story of Nabal's wife, Abigail, we see that Nabal was grossly disrespectful to King David. Mm. And we know that King David did not take it lightly. We know that King David said to himself, yeah, he has disrespected me. I'm going to take matters into my own hands. And King David summoned the great army and went against Nabal. But thank God that Abigail was a woman of God that stood in the gap. And as she stood in the gap, she went forward.
forward, glory to God. And she said to Nabal, to David, that he cannot do this thing because he is God's chosen and he is God's anointed, glory to God. And because he was God's chosen and God's anointed, and because of the intervention, glory to God, of, uh, of Abigail, David was, did not commit the action that was in his heart to get revenge, glory to God. Let me say to you that revenge is something that will eat out at you, glory to God. And when Nabal died shortly afterward, David praised God for her intervention, glory to God. Imagine if David had gone and slain him, all of his blood uh, and the servant, his servant will be upon David's head. But David, because of the intervention of Abigail, because of the word that Abigail spoke into his spirit, he withdrew. And God dealt with the situation himself. Church of God, you just have to let go of and that situation and leave it to God. Glory to God. God says, vengeance is mine. I will repay glory to God. Hallelujah, glory to God. He said that because of this intervention, that the Lord, you plead the cause of my reproach. And you kept me from avenging myself. Amen. Let me say to you, church of God, that when you take matters into your own hands, when you think, when you begin to think those thoughts, then you move yourself out of the favor and the will of God. You move yourself out of the favor and the will of God and begin to give God the opportunity to show him strong on your behalf. Glory to God. David experienced this himself first time when he came against Saul in first Samuel chapter 24, verse 17. And because David could have killed him and did not slay him then, uh, Saul had to say, Thou art more righteous than I, for thou hast not rewarded me good. For thou hast rewarded me good, whereas I have rewarded the evil, the bitterness, Saul's bitter heart towards David was now melted away. His heart was now melted because he realized that David was more righteous than he. He pursued him. He pursued him without a cause. He pursued him to slay him without a cause. But David did not touch the Lord's anointed. He did not do his prophet any harm. And when he spoke to him, when he realized that David could have taken his life, David, David could have done him then, according to the young people. David could have done him there and then. But he did not. He showed himself righteous. And therefore I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them that despisefully use you and persecute you this afternoon. I say a prayer for those who have hurt you. Pray for them. Not only pray that the fuck right. But pray for them. That the Lord will change their hearts. That the Lord will transform their lives. Pray for those who hurt you. Christ began to remove the pain when you began to pray for them. When you begin to pray for them, Christ will remove the pain that you feel deep down in your soul this afternoon. That is the power of forgiveness. Forgiveness removes the pain. Glory to God. In Luke chapter 23 and verse 34 it says, Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Glory to God. For they know what, not what they do. Glory to God. It is by Christ's shed blood. 
He has redeemed us and, and provided us forgiveness of sin. Glory to God. It is true that sacrifice. And let me say it, through your sacrifice and through you going through what you have to go through without taking up and reproach, glory to God, God will work mightily in that situation. It is through Christ that we have redemption today because he was willing to forgive. It is through Christ that we can be drawn closer to God this afternoon because he was what? Willing to forgive. Glory to God. And Colossians tells us, and you being dead in sin and the uncircumcision of your flesh, have he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all of your trespasses. But if you do not forgive God, your heavenly Father, our text tells us this afternoon, will not forgive you. You have to forgive. You have to forgive, church. A merry heart, Proverbs tells us, doeth is do. The, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit draft the bone. And unforgiveness will break your spirit. And unforgiveness will dry your bones. Glory to God. It will leave you empty like a shackle, like, like a shell this afternoon. That is why the scripture tells us in Luke chapter 6 verses 37. Judge not and ye shall not be judged. Can condemn not and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive and ye shall be forgiven. Forgive and he will and ye will be forgiven. In the church of God, God's people need to have the spirit of forgiveness in their lives. In God's church. And that is why the apostle Paul tells us to put it away all clamoring, all bitterness, all envying, all murmuring. He says to put it away and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, all wrath, all anger, all clamor, all evil speaking be put away from you and be kind what? to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as Christ, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. This afternoon. Hey, hey. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29 to 34, 32. You grieve the Holy Spirit of God when you have a spirit of unforgiveness. You grieve the spirit that seals your redemption when you have a spirit of unforgiveness this afternoon. When your heart is hardened and not tender, you have that spirit of unforgiveness that has in you. You have some people say, I will never forgive you. I will never forgive her. Then your heavenly father will not forgive you either. Jesus, who was despised and rejected. Jesus, who did no man anything wrong, did not allow the spirit of unforgiveness to take hold of his heart. But he but that he may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sin. Then saith he to the sick and the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go to thy house. Bitterness is a force that is destructive. Bitterness. 
bitterness will put you in bondage. And hinder you from being able to set the captives free. As a child of God, God wants to use you. God wants to manifest his power in your life. But God will not use, his, use you when you are in bondage to the devil. God will not use you when you are in bondage to Satan. If you are sitting here today and you have unforgiveness in your heart towards a brother or sister in here, God cannot use you as much as you jump and you skip and you show. Because you will be acting out of self. You will be acting out of the flesh and not the spirit. Because the Holy Spirit that sees you is grieved when you have a spirit of unforgiveness. You must be willing to forgive. You must be willing to let go. Glory to God. Glory to God. Because forgiveness destroys people and forgiveness destroys relationships, glory to God. It makes us prisoners of our hurt and it makes us prisoners of our hatred this afternoon, glory to God. You will be in bondage to yourself. You will be in bondage by your own bitterness. You will be in bondage by your own hatred. You will be in bondage by your own malice. You will be in bondage, oh glory to God, this afternoon. You will be in prison until the spirit of forgiveness rises up within you. Joseph knew this. In Joseph and oh, glory to God in Genesis chapter 50 from verse 14 to 21. We know the story of Joseph. Glory to God, a man of God, a man seeing and a man hearing from God. And because he saw and he heard from God, glory to God this afternoon, his brethren sold him into slavery. Glory to God. Joseph's brothers acting out of hatred. They acted out of malice. They acted out of jealousy. Glory to God this afternoon. Uh, and they sold him, glory to God, as evil spirit rose up in their hearts. A evil spirit rose up in their lives this afternoon. Glory to God. Oh, glory to God. And they rose up against the man of God. But they, George Joseph, did not deny the sinful nature of his brother's action. Because somebody do you wrong, you don't have to deny that they did you wrong. You don't have to deny it. But yet Joseph refused to let their actions turn him into a bitter man. And when you have that spirit of unforgiveness, you start to become a person of bitterness. You know you come into the presence of some people and they seem so angry. You come into the presence of some people and they seem so bitter that if the world is against them and everything. Joseph did not allow all of the hardship being placed in the pit. Being placed in prison. He did not allow this allow a spirit of unforgiveness to rise up within him. Oh, saints of God today, do not allow a spirit of bitterness to rise up in your heart today. Refuse it this afternoon. Resist it this afternoon. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Don't let the devil sow that seed in your hearts today. Don't let that devil sow that within you. And if it is there today, let the word of God penetrate your heart and let that seed, glory to God, be rooted out of your life today. 
Joseph did not respond to the hurt, but he showed forgiveness. He understood the importance of this principle. Only God today has the right to punish others for the wrong they do. Yes. I'm going to repeat it again. Only God, Only God has the right yes. to punish others for the wrong that they do. Amen. Amen. His brothers had sinned against him. And indeed, you might say that their actions may be unforgivable in the flesh. But Joseph today did not make any excuse. He knew that there would have been uncomfortable to God for their actions and not to him. Let me tell you something. Anyone that has done you any wrong there are uncomfortable to God today. They are uncomfortable to God. You don't have to take it into your own hands. They are uncomfortable to God. Whatever they are doing or whatever they have done. So therefore release that person to God. Yes, yes. Release that person to God. Don't hold on to that person in your mind. Don't hold on to that person in your heart. Release that person to God. Release them. Release them. Release them. Joseph had forgiven his brothers. And he could then comfort them. And he could then speak kindly to them. Glory to God. He brought them to Egypt. Long story. You know the story, so I don't have to go through it in any detail. But he brought them to Egypt. He brought his father to Egypt. And he provided for them. That is the spirit of forgiveness in demonstration. So forgiveness frees us from the destructive habit of a bitter soul. May we do not forgive our souls become the habitation of bitterness. Disruptive bitterness. Unforgiveness. Un for un or not forgiving an offense. Give Satan place in our lives. Mm -hmm. We open the door. Yeah. We open the door that Satan can come in and we get place to him. Church of God, when we are oh, the spirit of unforgiveness, we open the door through the spirit of unforgiveness. We give place to the devil. We give place to the devil when we have a spirit of unforgiveness. The word place means a small area of occupancy and jurisdiction. We give him an area. We got this big church. But when we allow our forgiveness to come in, he comes and he lodges in a small area of the church. Glory to God. When we have that spirit of unforgiveness. And once Satan gains entry, glory to God. Once Satan gains occupancy, glory to God. He takes over our lives and he keeps us in bondage and he directs us, glory to God. Once you let him in, in a little area, he will take over and dominate your life. You will have a desire not for the things of God. You will have lack of desire to pray. You will have lack of desire to sing the songs of Zion. You will have lack of desire to come into his house, 
to gather in his name to worship him. You will have a literary desire to, 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 to give him to the church of God. You will have a little desire to serve one another. You will have less and less desire to have that love and, uh, 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 and that genuine uh, uh, care for one another. Once Satan enters into your life, true unforgiveness this afternoon. True unforgiveness. He enters, he occupies, and then what he does, he directs your life. Hey, hey. Many Christians, many a spiritual practitioner and believer have knelt at the altar asking God to break through. Asking God to forgive them. Many of them have even promised to be different. Lord, if you do this to me, I'll be a good boy. I'll be a good girl. But they cannot get their breakthrough as much as they come and they hold on to the horns of the oil cup and they sweat and snot come out of their nostrils until oh, sweat and tears and everything flow, but yet they cannot, glory to God, get their breakthrough. But God gave us a remedy. The Bible says, if any man have heart with a brother, leave your gift at the altar, go and be reconciled, and then come back and get your gift, and God will accept your gift, and you will receive your breakthrough, glory to God. As long as Satan has become an occupancy in the domicile of your body, it will hinder you from God answering your prayer. You can't get that ritual. You can't get that ritual as Satan has a place in your life. If Satan still has a place in your life that he can claim you as his own, then that unforgiveness will fence him in and hinder you from having your prayer true. You must be able to say the God has of this world has come and have found nothing in me. If you have bitterness, if you have a deep felt resentment, if you have wrath, extreme anger, and rage, if you have anger or even mild displeasure, if you have if you have clamor, I need to talk about the person or the offense keeps coming up. If you are evil speaker and only the the, the, the any unkind, hurtful speech, pointing out what they perceive as false and criticisms. If malice, where you speak to intentionally harm someone or their reputation, or even to get even, Satan has a place in you. But until you forgive those who have hurt you, Satan will still control that part of your life and will continue to enslave you with the destructive habits.
I will hinder you from your steps to freedom. Mm -hmm. Calling harder to. Your steps to freedom. This afternoon, seek God's forgiveness. Seek forgiveness from God. If you have done wrong, if you have said wrong, seek forgiveness of God. Confess your bitterness to God. Confess it to God. Confess your selfish actions and motives. Your hateful speech. Your carnal living. Confess it to God. And agree with God that all feelings of bitterness, wrath, and malice, and all of those other things, that you have placed them out of your lives, that you have laid them, oh, glory to God, at the foot of the cross this afternoon. Lay them at the foot of the cross. Amen. Thank God and thank Jesus for the blood that cleanses you from sin. The sin of unforgiveness. May we be willing to forgive those who have wronged us. We no longer allow Satan to have a place in our lives. Church, I don't hold people in my heart. You can just cuss me. Huh? And if you ask me for a glass of water, I'm going to go and give you a clean glass of water. Glory to God. For I have no time to carry you. And that is what happens when we have forget unforgiveness. We are carrying that person with us. I have no time to wear myself down. Amen. But to release and to go forward because Satan must not have a place in my life. Glory to God. Amen. 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 So this afternoon, as I said before, I will say it again. If you are offering your offering and your gift to the altar, and there you remember that you have all with your brother or your sister or your brother or your sister have all for against you. Lay your gift in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to your brother and then come and give your gift. So today is the day. Harden not your heart. As in the day of provocation. But allow the spirit of God. A spirit of meekness. A spirit of repentance. A spirit of truth. A spirit of godliness. To rise up within you. That you will not allow the devil. To have a place in your life. For if you forgive other people. When they sin against you. Your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive you your sin. Our text this afternoon. Hmm. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother hey. or sister? Who have sinned against me. Mm. Up to seven times. Jesus answered. I tell you. Not seven times. But seventy times. Seven. Nice. In a day. Not in a year. But 70 times some of you must perfectly forgive and completely forgive your brother or your sister who have sinned against you. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against one another, forgive one another. If when you stand praying and you hold 
anything against one. Against anyone. Forgive them. So that your heavenly father may forgive you of your sins also. Mark 11, 25. Hmm. Forgive them. Forgive them. Forgive them. In order to obtain mercy, the merciful are the ones who obtain mercy. The merciful are the ones, according to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 7, and chapter 6, after verse 14 to 15, the merciful are the ones who will obtain mercy and gain forgiveness. And this comes from the, the power of love, the love of God that is shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit. Nice. Love. Love covers a what? Love covers a multitude of sin. Love. Love. Forgiveness will heal your soul. Forgiveness will restore you from a mind of guilt and the pain of sin. Forgiveness has the power to restore relationships. Let me say to you, the reason why some of you all don't have good relationship with others in here is because you do not have the spirit of forgiveness. Amen. Somebody did you something three years ago and you still have it in your mind and your heart. And that is why the relationship is severed and strained because you have not allowed the word of God to be active in your life. You have allowed Satan to enter into a part of your, a compartment of your life. But when you allow the spirit of forgiveness driven by love, it will restore the mind it will restore and remove guilt and, and the pain of sin. And it will restore relationships. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the effect of forgiveness. You did me harm. You did me wrong. But I forgive you. Therefore, God is not able to restore that broken relationship. But you know what some people do? Some people say, I will never forgive him. Then God will never hear your prayer. And God, according to the text, according to the scriptures, will not forgive you of your sin. I ain't going to forgive you, you know. It is the, 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 the enormity of it. It is that it is God himself that said, I will not forgive you. Take the beam out of your eye and then I will come and I will bless you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Then I will come work in your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So if you want that restored relationship, you have to be willing for God to work his work in your life. Forgiveness restores to the former state the relationship of the relationship which is now broken by sin, broken by unforgiveness. So Forgiveness restores the relationship. And if it, it was not a relationship, 
Forgiveness allows and gives the capacity for a relationship now to be established between the offender and the offended. Between the offender and the offended. Forgiveness within this church will strengthen this church. Forgiveness within the home will strengthen the home. Forgiveness within the workplace will strengthen the workplace. Forgiveness within the community will strengthen the community. In conclusion, this afternoon, uncover your anger. Uncover and unveil your unforgiveness. Expose it this afternoon. Don't bury it this afternoon. Don't wrap it in swaddling clothes. But like Lazarus, cut it off of you this afternoon and loose yourself and set yourself free, glory to God, from the bondages of unforgiveness today. Loose yourself. Set yourself free. Decide to forgive. Release yourself from that emotional prison that you have placed yourself in. Release yourself from the emotional prison. Release that anger. Release that person, it will only continue to hurt you. The stresses and the chemicals that release in the body because the emotional and uh, physi physiological results of unforgiveness are crippling bondage uh, and brings you into bondage all the aches and pains all the migraines, yeah. mm -hmm. huh? all the back pains that they carry, all of the chest pains that they carry, it is because of the manifestation of that unforgiveness in your body. Release. Forgive. And you will be forgiven. God will release you from the bondages as you forgive this afternoon. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. For it's quick and it's powerful. And it's sharper than any to every story. Father God, we pray even right now that the word of God will go into the fleshy tables of our hearts. Father God, if there's anyone that I have wronged that I need to forgive, help me, Lord God, to forgive them today. Give me the capacity to forgive, Lord God. Forgive and not remember to forgive and forget and to move on as if nothing has gone wrong in the past. Father God, I thank you for that spirit of forgiveness to rise in everyone within this church, everyone within the hearing of my voice, everyone within Lord God watching this even right now. I pray, Father God, that a spirit of forgiveness will rise up within us and that we will feel the burden immediately lifted off of us and Satan being dislodged from our bodies and our pains right now Lord God as we exercise the spirit of forgiveness in Jesus comforting Amen and Amen and Amen